Hello everyone and welcome to a new video uh, catching up with some of our global alumni, so students who've studied in York and then gone on to do all sorts of things around the world. Today we're joined by Monty. Hi Monty, how are you today? Oh, I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for coming along to join us. So Monty owns and runs his own TV production company and we've come along to talk to him today about some of the series that he's been developing. So Monty, maybe you could tell us what have you been up to since you graduated from York? Sure. Um, I I did um, the PhD at, at York and graduated in 2008. And you know, one of the things that um, that I hadn't foreseen when I arrived was just how much I would enjoy um, what be, what what has become known as public archaeology. That you know, interaction with people and 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 storytelling, which really at the core of what I value. That's kind of where my um my my forte is and um so i you know i spent some time working at museums in and around york um i worked at the the jorvik and uh a couple of other other places and and really kind of developed that love like i said of of store, both storytelling and public uh, archaeology so um after we left york returned back to back home to the us and um i taught for taught actually in a history department for a number of years. And um, over that time, I just, you know, I really was looking for some ways to kind of continue that public interaction. And over the course of a number of years, I started out kind of just, you know, low level consulting for somebody who had some questions about a, about archaeology when they were making a film. And, and I just sort of, I, I was so interested in what they were doing that I kind of got very interested in, 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 in learning how to do it. And so um, I started making uh, documentaries and, um, you know, and now we're, we're getting ready to go into the third season of um, an American public television series on uh, American history and archaeology called America from the Ground Up. It's a uh, kind of looks at um, the process of colonialism in the United States. Uh, and then um, I've just recently finished a uh, one hour documentary on the archaeology of the Trail of Tears, uh, which is the sort of uh, 19th century genocide and ethnic cleansing in the American Southeast and the removal of um, tribes to what's now Oklahoma. And then, um, you know, other things that I've kind of branched out into, I have just completed a short film on um, uh, uh, on a person who is a 100% uh, disabled veteran, who is a former US Army boxing champion, and he returned to his community and started a nonprofit gym working with at risk kids in kind of one of the really um, economically challenged areas of the community. So it, it, it to me, it's kind of this storytelling. Um, and that's and film is a really powerful medium for that. So it, that's kind of how I got into it. It's just I love telling those stories. So you are getting to make archaeology documentaries, but also take that passion for storytelling into other stories as well. Absolutely. Could you tell us a little bit more about America from the ground up? What, what are those programs are like and are you getting to do archaeology as part of them? Sure, absolutely. Um, what we do is each each season is six half hour episodes and you know they're they're thematically based. So season one, we looked at New France in North America and we kind of charted the interaction between the French and their native allies, the Anishinaabe people. And of course, they're bumping up against the British and the British American, the, the English American colonies and their native allies, the um, Iroquois. And so really taking those, the stories of both the colonizers and the indigenous peoples of North America and placing them all on as geopolitical actors on the stage and trying to analyze what they did through accessing those stories through archaeology. So each archaeological site excavation that we visit kind of propels that story and adds another piece of the puzzle that helps us understand the whole story arc. And then the season two, the second season came out in 2018. Um, we looked at the Spanish in the American Southwest and how um, they're expanding northwards up from Mexico into what's now um, modern New Mexico, Arizona, California, um, and that, that, that part of the world, and looking at their interaction with the French and also the Russians. Um, archaeologically, we were able to access um, Russian colony 
in what is now Sonoma, California, sort of wine country on the coast. And, you know, we talked with the archaeologists, uh, uh, Ken Lightfoot, who excavated that, and kind of, you know, were able to look at how um, the Russians are making um, inroads into what's now con the continental United States um, in the in 18, you know, 1815 to about 18, uh, 1840s. That's fantastic. So very diverse set of stories being told and, and a chance to really show it through the first hand through the archaeological evidence. Yeah. So what do you plan to do next? What's coming up next? Well, we're we're in pre-production on the third season where we're going to go to the American Southeast, uh, sort of Virginia to Florida, over to the um, Mississippi River. And we're going to look at the interaction between the British and the Spanish and the British and Spanish and French and the various native peoples of the South, Southeast, um, you know, from the Cherokee to the Wampanoag to um, the Muscogee Creek people. Uh, one of the things I'm particularly excited about for season three is we're uh, cooperating and, and working with the Muscogee Creek Nation. And um, one of their archaeologists um, on staff is going to be um, a co writer on the season. So really trying to bring the native perspective more organically into the entire um, project. Uh, just a quick aside about um, one of the things I'm really excited about archaeology in the US is how um, indigenous peoples have started to embrace archaeology as a discipline after you know many de decades getting on for a century of really fractious um, relationships, and, and rightly so. But they're embracing archaeology as a tool to recover their own um, stories and their own heritage. That's really exciting and yeah, fantastic to be able to see those collaborations developing and yeah. to be able to have those stories told firsthand by Indigenous communities is really exciting. I think for us as archaeologists, we've got a lot to learn from, from those stories being told. Um, so my final question for you yeah. then is, what do you see as the value in studying archaeology? What did it bring to your to your career or to your life? Um, what do you see as the sort of important things for people thinking about studying archaeology? I think archaeology as a, as a discipline really just can open up the entire world to someone. If you think about what we do, um, archaeology is a humanities discipline and it's also a science discipline. And it's that interdisciplinarity that is so important, I think, in creating um, not just, you know, a, a skill set that might be useful in the field, but also a, a well-rounded person who's able to take those tools and critically analyze almost, a, you know, an endless um, set of data and, and problems. And that, I think, is what makes us valuable um, beyond the field of archaeology. I know, I know people who, who have done degrees in archaeology who go on to do, you know, many different things. That myself, you know, I, I became a filmmaker. I'm still rooted in archaeology. It's the core of what I do. But again, it's, it's that, you know, that, in, that interdisciplinary training, um, the melding of the humanities and the sciences. It just, you know, it, it opens up a different way of thinking for you that's valuable across the board.